today we have a rather different watch to take a look at. This is the Seiko SBTR-017 Mecha Quartz, and this is actually under the Spirit Selection lineup, which is a Japanese domestic market only lineup. I know a lot of people um, in the watch community feel that Seiko really does reserve some of the best watches for themselves in Japan, and um, it's kind of true, actually. This watch is a bit of a testament to that. We'll get into the full review, we'll talk about the pros and cons, who this watch is for, and whether or not it fits my requirements for a chronograph, because currently, I don't have a chronograph, and I actually personally bought this watch to see if it would fit what I'm looking for. Anyways guys, thanks for watching, and let's get into the full review. We really can't talk about this watch without mentioning that green dial, and what a dial it is. It's more reminiscent of the Seiko Alpinist, however I find that the, the gold subdial registers here actually reflect light back onto the dial, making it look a little bit more vibrant than the Seiko Alpinist. It's a welcome touch. The Seiko logo is also reflecting light there as you can see, and it's an applied logo. The actual dial itself under natural lighting is quite interesting. It looks almost dark green to a black. It kind of reminds me of a Lotus sports car in British racing green. Really fantastic combination. The gold just bounces light back and forth onto the dial and you get a very beautiful look. The case dimensions are 40 millimeter in case size, 20 millimeter lug width, and about under 12 millimeters in thickness in the mid case. Altogether, quite contemporary case size that should fit um, a majority of wrist size out there. So altogether, I do enjoy the size of this watch. The actual heart of this watch is a mecha quartz movement. The Calibre 8T63 inside this watch does have mechanical feeling on the pushers. And as you see that as I push the chronograph pusher, the uh, chronograph hand is sweeping around. Not as smoothly as your regular mechanical chronograph movements, but it makes sense. This is a $250 watch to begin with. So you're getting mechanical uh, chronograph feel on the pushers, but quartz-like accuracy. Now that is a benefit to this watch because the robustness of quartz movement is also there. This is a movement used in the likes of Dan Henry and Otto Dromo, Stratton. A lot of micro brands do flock to this movement because of its uh, its low cost, but its durability, and there's no problem with this watch surviving 10 years or longer with just swapping out the battery every 3-4 to four years. So I think it's a really welcome addition to this watch. The actual case finishing of this watch is good. You're getting a tachymetric scale that's high polished finishing all the way across um, that is framing the Hardlex crystal, and you have satinated finishing on the lugs. Um, the overall case finishing is good. The case back is actually a simple solid case back, and I'm sorry guys, I don't have a footage of it here. It's signed with the Seiko logo, it's nothing special. Um, I wouldn't really comment too much on that one. What are some of the pros and cons of this watch, and who is it intended for? Well, one of the pros is that dial. I do love that rich, deep, dark green with the gold accents there. It does really remind me of um, the Lotus Racing Team color, for example. And even, even for myself, as, I, as much as I love green, just seeing the gold play against the green is a very nice touch to me. Um, another pro is the price point that it's selling at. Highly competitive, as the Mecha Quartz movement are now actually put into a lot of micro brand watches that tend to price their watches upwards to $500 to $600. I find that this is fairly priced um, compared to some micro brand watches that have set their own prices. Now, there are reasons why they've done that. To include the Mecha Quartz movement into their watches is also for keeping costs low, but for simplicity's sake too, it's a great movement. Now, the other pro that I have about this particular watch would be its case dimensions. It's a crowd pleaser. 40 millimeters, um, case size, 20 millimeter lug width. If I show you on the wrist here, I'll just bring it into view. It fits and wears quite comfortably on my six and a quarter inch wrist. Now, it's a deployant clasp, and I'll talk about that in a second, so I'm not gonna close it up, but that kind of gives you an idea of how it looks like on the wrist and how it feels. Um, speaking of the strap itself, 
This is the worst, if not the, the least impressive Seiko leather strap that I have handled in recent memory. And I say that is because it's just got this rubbery feel to the leather and it's not so soft and conforming to your wrist. It, it's a bit rigid, in fact. That's something that kind of holds me back on this watch. Now that's easily remedied. You can put this on a nice Fluco suede strap like the one I reviewed in last video. Maybe you can even put this on a nice rally strap and that would look wonderful too. Even something with a nice brown color like the glove in the background here would be a nice touch to add to this green dial as well. So it's not a difficult thing to remedy on this watch. It would definitely enhance your experience and ownership of this watch though. Highly recommend you do that. The deployment clasp is nice. It's quite solid. I mean, I, I really am impressed with this. Milled out of 316L steel, just like the case. It's solid in operation. It clicks in just like that. And this part opens up for you to slide the other side of the strap through to adjust the size. So you get a really nice um, fit with this particular deployment clasp. Um, now, with that being said, another con that I have noticed of this watch is the quality control. You'll take a look at, if you see the six o'clock there, you may not be able to make it out because of the angle of um, where I'm filming, but the chapter ring is a hair out. I think it's out to my left um, when I see it in person, but you may not be able to see it in the camera here. That, that is a little bit disappointing because um, to Seiko standards, misaligned chapter rings are not deviations or defects in manufacturing, but rather within the acceptable um, degree of measure of quality for Seiko. And uh, they normally will just let this go out of the factory. So that's that kind of diminishes the ownership of this watch for me, because if you're looking at that wonderful green dial and um, you notice that misaligned chapter ring, it kind of takes away from the dial itself and the appreciation of the watch. So that's something to kind of look out. If you have a chance to buy this watch, ask the seller for pictures um, before you pull the trigger. And hopefully that will help you minimize, you know, potential, potentially buying a watch that has a misaligned chapter ring. Okay. Uh, with that also being said, who is this watch intended for? As I said earlier, I was looking for a watch to fill the gap in my collection that is the chronograph because I've always wanted a chronograph. I think for the person who's looking for an affordable chronograph with a unique dial, with um, obvious influences to the Daytona Speedmaster and the Universal Geneve Tri-Compacts, then you will appreciate this one. The dial elements are nicely executed. There are concentric circles that frame the subdial registers that are very reminiscent of the Daytona. You even have the straight baton hands for the hour and minutes too. Now, those are all design cues that are very aesthetically pleasing because it's a balanced design. There is no part of the dial where the space has been wasted. It's all been used effectively. Um, the only one thing I wish this watch may not have is the date. I, I think it would look cleaner without the date, but that's just my personal preference. Let me know how you guys feel about that one in the comments. Now, we're drawing to the end of the video here. I just want to say a heartfelt thank you to those of you who watch from beginning to end. If you guys want to see more watch content like this, please subscribe um, and definitely hit that notification bell because that's the only way you can see new videos from me. Um, YouTube does a great job of hiding videos on their um, main page. And also leave a like if you like this kind of content because I'm excited to do more watch reviews for you guys as more watches come in my way. Um, a heartfelt thank you for you guys once again. And I'm going to show you what the loom looks like in the next clip here, but I will catch you in the next one. So guys, this is the loom on the SBTR-017. It's not bad by any measure, but it's not the greatest loom either. But we can't be expecting too much of a sub-$300 chronograph. I think it's just fine.